worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Very warm welcome to Mass this morning on this Sunday after Ascension Day, in this time uh, between Ascension Day and the great feast of Pentecost as we draw to the final days of Easter. If you're here for Sunday, please do follow Jill into the Lady Chapel. For the last few weeks, the choir has been singing the new congregational mass setting, David Thorne's Trinity Mass. You are now invited to join in if you can pick up uh, the tune. Christ has gone up on high, leading captivity captive. As we prepare ourselves to meet him here in the courts of heaven, let us call to mind our many failures and sins.
until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Basadas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the Lord fell on the fires, and he was added to the eleven apostles. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. A reading of the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son, those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that the God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God.
from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and that they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours, or mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given, so that they may be one as we are. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. by the Mount of Olives, the angels tell the disciples, still looking to heaven, there's nothing to see here. Go. Nothing to see here until Jesus returns. The men in white are quite bright. Jesus, over the last 40 days, has taught them so much. <coughs> That they were already beginning to be changed man and woman. They were no longer. 
disciples. The disciples really are spiritual people with elbows. They were now apostles. Literally, it means people ready to be sent off on a mission. <coughs> the apostles will have no views to sit in. <coughs> Unlike us, <coughs> they are about to change the world forever. But I imagine that some of them are bursting to, to get on with it. But Jesus had left the last command. Do not leave Jerusalem, he said, but wait. Wait for my, the gift my father promised. Which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So wait. You have the knowledge of God says. You must be still bursting with joy that you chose the right side this life. Your spiritual air plates are off. But you've got to wait for something. You've got to wait for the power and the counsel and the strength of the understanding and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. So, they did what all Christians should do before doing anything. Gathered together, they stayed together, and they prayed together. The book of Acts tells us they all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. There was a great spiritual congregation going on there. Inspired by that event, the World Wide Church has followed a suggestion from the Church of England in using this time between Ascension and Pentecost to join together in a simple commitment for Christians throughout the world that each of us will spend a moment of the day praying for us and for our world grow and blossom and fruit into all kinds of godly goodness. There are links to these resources on our church website and likewise on the Church of England. Both the thing is called Thy Kingdom Come. So, <laughs> how many do we just sit Ready to be just wait. Wait for that guidance, strength, wisdom of the Holy Spirit to empower what we do. We often just go off and save the church with our spiritual engine still in neutral. We're not in gear. strength and power of the Holy Spirit. Thank God. The transformation in the apostles was a new miracle. As they waited and prayed, the very essence of Jesus, the depth of the Spirit, and the love of God himself came now into each one. Where once God was in Christ. He was in all of them and all of us. And because of that, his empowering love is already around us and within. So why should we wait? Why should we pray? Maybe the best answer is that Jesus did a lot of it. 
one of the most distinctive things that Jesus did. After the baptism in, on the River Jordan, where the Father God himself had expressed his pleasure and delight in Jesus, he was very raring to go. But the book of Mark tells us that the Spirit drove him into the wilderness to a place where he could start thinking about being with God and praying to God and gaining power from God. He had to wait and learn how to fight the enormous temptations there are whenever we do church business to do it all wrong. Throughout the Gospels, it seems as if Jesus is always withdrawing for a time of prayer. And when he comes out of it, he's renewed, empowered, more wise, more compassionate, more compassionate, and more himself. We're called to prayer, and often it seems like another thing, another duty. And in the gospel today, we have part of what John, what is maybe called the Jesus prayer, and the last words of Jesus in John's gospel before he goes out to Gethsemane. And we're given a little insight into what prayer might meant for him and might mean for us. This is what we hear Jesus asking his Father in heaven for in the Gospel today. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. In Pentecost, that prayer is answered. Peter is transformed. Jesus now with him and in him, and all the apostles everywhere all the time, they are one, just as Jesus had prayed. In prayer we find that we are not apart from God, but that God is all around and within us, and God gives us to Jesus, and we are given the gift of prayer. The gift of being one with Jesus and the Father. I think nine times in that passage, Jesus talks about giving. Giving us to God, God to us, to each other. Prayer is not easy in itself, but we don't have to rely on ourselves. The new thing that Jesus brought us is a new way of praying that we never have before. God has sent His Son, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. That's in the book of Galatians. The new way we talk to God is as close as that, always Daddy. That's the work of the Spirit releasing the ability for us to pray and to come close to God. Archbishop Lord Williams comments on prayer in this way. He says, God knows, of course, what we're going to say and do, but God has decided that he will work out his purposes through what we've decided to say and do. So if it's God's will to bring something about, some act of healing or reconciliation, some change for the better in the world, he has chosen your prayer that is going to be part of the set of causes that makes it happen. So he says you better get on with it as you and your prayer Part of God's overall purpose or the situation in which He's going to work. Do you notice how this prayer of Jesus is full of love for His companions? Prayer is not 
simply a routine. It's not simply a spiritual exercise. It's not even a merely a healthy part of our faith lives. It could be all of those things. But it's something more. Prayer is love. Taking the time to name the hopes, joys, concerns, fears, and thanksgiving of someone you know, and to bring all that into the presence of the loving God through an act of prayer. is your care, your concern, and your compassion for the one for whom you are praying. And it expresses your trust that they are as important to God as they are to you. Prayer is more of it. It's that simple. The more we pray, the less our prayer is about things we want, the more it is about aligning ourselves God's loving purpose for us to flower and fruit in this world. Press a chance to remind ourselves of blessing and to give thanks. Jesus takes the opportunity in that passage to recognize the disciples and their fidelity. They have kept your word, Father, he says, and he gives thanks for it. Do you know how powerful it can be to hear someone thank God for you in their prayers? That's something we can do more frequently. We can thank God for having prayer for priests, a choir that sing like angels. We can thank people for a people here that do a hundred acts of love every week, from lighting candles to changing white keeping this place working as a place of worship. When we thank God for them, we start to see them as God sees them. Prayer, of course, is a place to share our deep-seated concerns, worries, and fears, and ask for help. See how honest Jesus is about his concerns. He knows it's going to be hard that the world will be hard on them. He does not hide that. Prayer is a time to tell the truth and hear the truth. It's astounding to think that Jesus prays for his compatriots to be sanctified. It's the same word that we translate as hallowed in the Lord's Prayer. He prays for nothing less than for those who follow him to be hallowed, sanctified. Such a beautiful thing for each one of us. We're set apart for something special. We are special. And that prayer is answered at Pentecost for the disciples. When they become apostles, set apart, empowered, given wisdom and strength that brings the miracle of God's love right down through the ages to you and I. We are here today because we are an answer to other people's prayers. That prayer is answered as we continue to pray for our hurting world and its people. Finally, beloved, let us love one another. If we love, we pray. And if we pray, we love. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you.
I believe in one, <coughs> one God. Dearest Jesus, you prayed for us, your church, on the night in which you were betrayed. So now we continue your prayer for the church. Open our hearts and minds to your word. Deepen our faith and understanding. Protect your church, both here and around the world from all that would seek to divide and dilute your message of love. Make us one as you are one. Equip us to embody your word in the world today. You still send us out into the streets to share your love and peace and joy and hope with a world in desperate longing for these gifts. Stir us up and send us out wherever your spirit leads us this week. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Dearest Jesus, we pray your blessings upon fields and farmers and all who labor to bring forth our daily bread. Help us to bless this earth through which you provide our every need. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Dearest Jesus, your fervent prayer for the ones you loved was unity. We pray for every place of disunity, tension, and violence. From individual homes and families, to whole nations plagued by violence and war. We pray for an end to all evil and for peace to prevail. We pray this especially for the Holy Land and Ukraine. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Dearest Jesus, you prayed that our joy may be complete. We pray for joy in place of sadness, for hope in place of despair, and for your healing presence to be felt by all the sick, including His Majesty the King and Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales, for Sally, Minnie, Matrix, Roy, Roy Lewis, Gaynor Lewis, Rachel Owen, 
Cheyenne Butt, John Verity, Chanel, Alex Halliwell, Suru Anak Bunkis, Christopher Bowen, and Margaret. We pray also for the bereaved and the recently departed, and all whose year's mind falls at this time, including Joan Carter, Alice Vernon, and Mary Bates. And we pray for all those whose names are held within our hearts at this time. Gather into your wholeness all who feel broken. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Dearest Jesus, we thank you for the lives of all the saints, from those who gathered with you in that upper room all the way down the generations to those who formed us in the faith and brought us to this place. Gather us with them in the fullness of time to feast as your one church around your heavenly banquet table forever. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the risen and ascended Lord be always with you. So let us offer each other a sign of that.
Lord of all and source of our joy, receive our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. <clears throat> Keep us in the love of Christ and bring us to the vision of his glory. <clears throat> Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did, 
In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection till he comes in.
Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. This morning, it's excellent to see everyone here this morning. Uh, please do stay behind after Mass uh, for refreshments in the refresh refreshment area, tea, coffee, biscuits as per usual. Um, as always, please do take away a, a notice sheet for this week or find one online. Um, <clears throat> Tuesday um, is a Saints' Day, Matthias or Matthias the Apostle. Um, so please do come, consider coming to Mass at 10 a.m. on Tuesday uh, for that. Um, the next book group um, will be meeting towards the end of this month. Um, please do have a word with me um, if you're interested in joining the book group or if you'd like to know what the book is for this month. That meets usually on the last Tuesday of every month. On Thursday, the 23rd of May, so coming up quickly, um, we'll be having our next um, <clears throat> historical tour here at All Saints um, at 11am. Tickets are £5, which includes tea, coffee, refreshments. So please do come to that on the 23rd, 23rd of May. And then also, uh, next month on the 15th of June, which is a Saturday, um, at 7.30pm here in church, um, the Utopians Unlimited um, <clears throat> will be doing ballad songs and snatches. Uh, the Oily Cart uh, also featuring uh, former members of the De Oily Cart Opera Company. Um, so that's uh, an evening of your favourites uh, from Gilbert and Sullivan Melodies. Uh, so please do book um, into that on the 15th of June if you're able to. I think those are most of the notices for today. Other than to say next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Um, service times are as normal with the normal 9am all age mass and 10.30 high mass. However, we encourage everyone to turn up wearing something red to keep the spirit of Pentecost, the flames of the spirit coming down upon the apostles. So please do come in something red next Sunday. So, over to Sunday. If you were in Sunday Club this morning, come to the front.
A bit like a god. They gave it to God. A bit like Britain's Got Talent, but on a godly basis. The, the golden buzzer, the final decision, rested with our God in heaven. And so that's how Matthias came to be the next disciple. It made it 12 again, part of like the symbolic of 12 tribes of Israel. So we thought this morning about the team that made the disciples. We've talked this morning about what makes a good team, good team player. So we first of all thought about just that in general, and then we thought about what makes a good disciple. And all of a sudden it went like a hive of activity around the paper. When, we, when I asked them what makes a good disciple, it was a lot easier to come up with that than it was to come up with the team player things. And then finally, our smallest members of our group this morning have been thinking about God and our hearts, and God knows what's in our hearts, and he gives us our gifts and talents. Now you can see that some of our sons and blood members are wearing robes because they serve, they use their gifts and talents <coughs> in the church. And we all have gifts and talents that we can use. Some of us are flower arrangers. Some of us help with Sunday food. And all of these gifts and talents make us a community that reaches out to the poor community of Car Shelton. So we've had a busy day and we've got one final prayer to read. So let me take over and let's go and pray together. Let us pray. Loving God. Show us how to use these gifts for you and help us to use what we are good at to help others. And to make our friends smile. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand for God's blessing.
to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.